The Frozen North, episode 80, hitting the reset button. Hello and welcome to episode number 80 of the Frozen North Gaming Podcast, hitting the reset button. My name is JJ and I'm here with my two friends, Mark. Ha! Wait, should I change this? Should I go to something new? That's, that's Have your, I already said call. aloha, y'all? You said it on your show. Oh, um, <laughs> go to every- aloha, y'all! Ow. Okay, you started a thing. I want a now different greeting in every language possible no. for the next 30 years. Nope. Yeah, eighty episodes. That's what that's what the, the mark is apparently. <laughs> the mark. Yeah. yeah. Every eighty episodes, I'll change my catchphrase. Yep. And Brian. Hey, Brian here. Uh, checking in here with y'all here now. I'm here. Brian's here. That certainly is Brian. <laughs> I'm definitely here. I can I can definitely corroborate that with myself. Brian, are you here? I am here. Thanks, Brian. Over back to you, Brian. Thank you. I don't know what just happened at I'm, all. I'm impressed. I'm not surprised. <laughs> it doesn't take much to impress you. Um, we're here to talk about video games. Uh, actually, episode number 80. I mean, I can't believe we've done 79 episodes. I know. That's freaking crazy. This is actually going to be kind of a new beginning episode for us. We're uh, going to be talking about some changes that are going to be uh, made to the show. Um, also, hopefully, I can get this episode uploaded to YouTube as well. So we're going to start having uh, some some content up there. And well, I say content, but I mean just our episodes. The same thing. Yeah, the same, same stuff. <laughs> just to try and get out there to more people. Look, sometimes you can only get to YouTube. I was going to say Netflix. <laughs> what does that mean? Sometimes, sometimes you, you can only get to YouTube. Sometimes you. Okay, uh, let me actually I defend name myself the episode here. That. No, fair enough. <laughs> but listen to me here for a second. I, I can actually justify that. If I'm sitting in the couch and I don't have my phone near me and I don't have a laptop near me, but I do have my Roku. And I have Netflix on it. That doesn't that doesn't help you with YouTube. <laughs> and it has YouTube. Oh, and, it has YouTube. <laughs> and you're still screwed. I mean Hold on. Okay, and I back. can pull up YouTube and I can pull up the episode and listen to it. Man, it's a good thing we're doing this restructure because whew, you got some fixing to do, Mark. His face when he realized he said it wrong again was priceless. I if wish you y'all could have seen it. You know, I'd like to apologize to anybody else who's been trying to listen to our show on Netflix. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I know if you search for the Frozen North, it comes up with some weird stuff that's not us. Trust me. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> what have you guys been playing? I've been playing The Witcher some more. Uh, I haven't put enough time into it yet to really fully form my opinions though but it is as it's catching on i'm enjoying it more and i've also just started playing a new game called pocket morty's which is based on the rick and morty series doesn't count it counts it's what like pokemon it on? what system is it on <laughs> oh the old drink of the water it is yep Mark's what system is it on Mark's a mobile gamer. it's on uh, the phone it's the first phone game i enjoyed i can chew ice when i'm talking don't do that <laughs> You can't chew ice. You can, just don't do it in the mic. Oh. Oh. So you've been playing The Witcher 3 and uh, Candy Crush? <laughs> what? No, it's not Candy Crush. <laughs> it's the original Pokemon. You like Pokemon. Are you saying Pokemon's Candy Crush? No, not at all, because Pokemon wasn't on a mobile platform when I played it. I mean, oh! Ah! Is, that, is that the only thing that determines what something yes, is? Yes, 100%. Brian, what have you been playing? Nothing but Xenoblade Chronicles X, and I have played about... 90 hours, I think I'm 90 hours in, and I can definitely oh. say I've formed my opinion, and I can definitely say that if you don't buy a Wii U and you don't play... Well, actually, hold on. It's not... I'll explain when I get to my top five. It's not for everybody, but it resonates with me pretty pretty starkly. Pretty pretty, <laughs> pretty great. It is, it is a fantastic game. I think so, I beat it at around 70 hours. It may or may not have made my top five of all time. All my goodness. Uh, and then I have been playing The Witcher 3 like crazy, and also Final Fantasy 7. And I was telling you about this earlier. Um, I've been I've been streaming Wednesday and Thursday nights Final Fantasy 7 uh, on our, on Twitch. And like to those of you that have been watching me, you know that I've kind of been just playing through the game regularly. And 
I've been talking about like you know I think when I when I when I start grinding and having to do all this side stuff I'll probably just do that off camera because I think it's gonna take too long and stuff like that. I remember when I played the game when it first came out, getting a gold chocobo, knights of the round, uh, and even omni slash took so freaking long to get that far. I did it in like two hours last night. Like I was like, you know what? I'll start it and I'll, I'll do a little bit, see how far I get. Maybe breed one chocobo or whatever. No, it was ridiculously easy. The only part that took time was fighting and trying to catch the right chocobos to to breed. Yeah. But everything else went by super quick. It's ridiculous. That's awesome. Now you have so, Knights of the Round. I do. I do. And, uh, oh, man, I got Quadra Magic and oh, just memories and good stuff. Can't wait for the remake. It'll yeah, be sweet. Absolutely. That's going to be great. And then, uh, yeah, Witcher 3, which I am in love with that game. Yeah, you so. made it to the Skellige Islands, which I told you was sailing, sailing, more sailing, and oh, some sailing. Gosh, you weren't <laughs> kidding. It's insane. But it's yeah. it's so gorgeous. And I saw a whale for the first time today. Yeah. Holy crap. Had no idea that those were in there. It kind of scared us, too. We were like, oh, no. <laughs> Is it a bad whale? Emails. We did get one. So, first of all, I want to congratulate Mark. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, because his plea on the freaking last episode, episode 79... Where I, you know, I went through the whole spiel, listing our our contact info on our Facebook page, Twitch, uh, Twitter, all that stuff, and then Mark just jumps in. He's like, you know what? I really want you guys to listen and focus in on this and do it. Send something in, blah blah blah. And like, I had people contacting me on freaking Twitter telling me they wanted to do like a side quest. I had people writing in. I had people on Facebook saying stuff. Like, I'm like, how the? I've been saying this every freaking episode. Yeah, dude. And then Mark does it once, and all of a sudden. I have a very authoritative voice. Mark, you do. Mark got mad. He got mad, y'all. It was it was impressive. Um, but we got we got. Uh, I wanted to read this uh, this email that we got on the air. Um, comes to us uh, from our buddy Alex. He says, "Morning, FN crew." Was listening to episode seventy nine and the plea for the feedback. So I thought, hey, I can do that. Uh, he says a few random thoughts to begin. The bug in Fallout with the torch that sucks. Once I get home, once I get the game, I'll at least be aware that it could be a problem. So thanks. Uh, I think he's talking about the one. The, oh, the, the fusion cores. Yeah, the fusion yeah. core. Um, then he says, <laughs> "FF13 being renamed always." That was damn funny because it's it's true. That's absolutely it's true. Totally true. Right. I uh, hope you all have fun at E3, and you will be. And will you be doing any podcasting from there, or will you be recording at all? Um, I don't know yet. It's just going to be Brandon and I. And right now, the plan is to. Like I if if any of you, like the people that watch me stream have heard me say this, I'm kind of like this is my first time ever going to E3, and honestly, I think I'm probably going to be a little selfish about it just because it's been a dream of mine for a while to go there. I just want to go and freaking enjoy it and have a really good time. Not that if I was recording and doing all this stuff, I wouldn't enjoy it, but I really want to go and kind of get a feel for the place and 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 take in everything and you know Absolutely. actually you know just uh, just be able to to focus on the event itself rather than how am I going to relay this to, to everybody else? That doesn't mean I'm not going to do anything. The Right now, the plan is to have... I have a portable recording device that I'm going to bring. And I think when we go, we're going to go do the stuff each day. And then when we get back to the hotel room, we'll just like... The two of us will just talk about what we saw that day. And then release it all like at the end or something like that. Or maybe even like I'll send it to Mark and he can upload it or something like that each night or whatever. Um, I don't know yet. But... Either way, it's uh, we, we, I, I, I promise you we will try to do something for sure. I just don't know what yet because um, I don't know what's going to work for us. This is this is totally new territory for me, um, and it's uh, without my, my tech guy there, it's going to be kind of tough. Thanks, Mark. E3's in Langlis, isn't it? In, I think he means Los Angeles. Yeah, Langlis. I, I, I thought he meant Legolas for a second. Let's, no, Langlis. I don't think it's inside Legolas. That'd be weird. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, is it in nope. Langlis, though? Am I thinking that right? LA Convention Center. That's where yeah, it's okay, at. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, he says, okay, now for a bit more structured email. He says, the conversation on Xenoblade Chronicles X, that was interesting. And Isaac very much mirrored my thoughts when I was playing the original Xenoblade Chronicles. The graphics really put me off the game from the beginning. But then it started to feel very grindy right in the first few hours. It was one of the few games uh, that within a day I seriously regretted my purchase. I'm glad, however, that you guys liked it. I just didn't get enjoyment out of it personally. And we said that. we like People who really, really were into the first game... It's not the same game. It's not. It really isn't. It's literally like I was saying. Like if you're trying to play Xenoblade Chronicles X because you think it's going to be the next iteration of Xenoblade Chronicles, it's that's not right. They no. They just picked the name because it 
you know, was a brand recognition type thing. Um, right. It's definitely not. It's it's definitely a monolith soft game. You can see their fingerprints all over the game, but it's just don't don't pick it up if you think it's going to be Xenoblade Chronicles. Right. We and we, you know if you want to hear the whole conversation, episode seventy nine. That's where we talk about it all, everything like that. I'll just I'll just finish it with this. Look at it like Final Fantasy thirteen to the Final Fantasy series. If you're not a fan of thirteen, try to look at it as a separate game rather than a Final Fantasy game. If you're not a fan of Xenoblade Chronicles X, try to look at it as a separate game rather than a Xenoblade Chronicles game. And I think it's easier to to swallow at that point mm-hmm. when you do that. So because I mean, Ryan and I had a yeah. well, he's still having a blast with it, and I had a great time. I mean, I'm it. 90 hours in, and I it doesn't feel like grinding to me. But here's why, real quick, just to expound on that. Now that I'm 90 hours in, I'm pretty confident. The only grindy thing to it that I don't like, and I even told JJ, is the affinity, getting your party's affinity up for each person to do the cool st- side missions with yep. them. That's the only thing that I don't like. However, what I don't feel like is grindy is going out and doing the side quest and. This is because I'm building towards a a build, right? So in this game, like many MMOs, you have a build, a certain way to gear. The gear system and the class system is complex enough to where you can actually sit down and write out, like, okay, here's what I need to go for. There's augments. There's gear that ups certain damage types. And you can make really powerful, overpowered builds. And that's something I love in games to do, especially in RPGs, is to become super overpowered through the games, you know, I don't obviously use console commands or anything like that, Brandon. Um, but <laughs> I like to use the game's mechanics to create an ultimate build. And so it doesn't ever feel like grinding to me, but I get the grindy factor to it. So that's why I said it's not for everybody, but it just resonates with me. It's like everything that MMOs, I love about MMOs without all the, the other stuff that I don't like. So Definitely. Um, okay, he says... On the topic of wishful thinking, I came up with a few ideas for that, even an honorable mention, just for fun. Um, he's talking about our last top five that we did, where we did our like games that we would love to see get another sequel or another entry into the series, but most likely didn't see it happening anytime soon. So we put together a top five list for this. So he says, honorable mention, Mr. Mosquito says this game was just silly, but strangely fun. It'll never happen, but I'd play a sequel to this. I've never heard of Mr. Mosquito. Anybody? No. I. I'm... It might, I might be thinking of the one with the fly, but apparently mm. you fly around a house with like inhabitants, and your uh, your goal is to you know suck blood from each family member. I, I might I might I might be thinking of the right one. Um, he has like a big head, little body, flies around, and you have to not get caught, and you have to suck blood from the family members in the house. It looks like I'm looking at screenshots. It looks like that might be what it is. Okay. But I don't. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I remember. <laughs> sounds goofy. I remember very vaguely seeing that game. Never played it, obviously, but uh, it looked interesting enough. Right. He says uh, number five, Metroid. Good call on the actual Metroid <laughs> series. I would be cool with a new Prime or even an entry in the vein of Other M. Uh, I would like to see a bit of innovation on the game, though. Recycling the same enemies, items, and weapons is a touch on the boring side, even factoring for nostalgia. Number four, Front Mission, Mech Combat. I'd love to see another of these. Especially if it were to use the mechanics from 3. Uh, attacks were a bit more dangerous in that entry. Using a shotgun near an ally could accidentally hit your teammate while the other's damage was aimed at your only target. And if you missed, you missed. No collateral damage concerns. Um, and I've, I've heard that too from Front Mission. That uh, the, the combat's really different in each game. And there's <laughs> there's I don't, I'm not a big fan of games with friendly fire, to be honest. Anyways. Uh, number 3. Metal Gear Solid. I really enjoyed the series and had a fantastic time with 5, which I just heard a podcast on, and I really want to play it now. Uh, without Kojima, if there are more games in the series, the question begs, will they be as good? That's a very good question. Yeah. With Konami at the head? Yeah. Let me shake my <laughs> magic eight ball. Oh, yeah, signs we'll point to hell no. Uh, number two, Rune Factory. Studio that was greenlit to make the next installment went under and then was bought by Marvelous, I think. Uh, haven't seen or heard much about the new one for a bit. But these farming RPGs were loads of fun. You played. Rune I played Factory, uh, right? one of them for the 3DS. I got really into it for like two weeks, and then I just was done with it. But yeah, I remember you saying you I, liked what you what you played. Yes, definitely. Uh, and it's a very cool idea for a game. And if we're going to keep making uh, Harvest Moon games and uh, what, animal, uh, animal Crossing, is that right? I don't know what you're asking me. Um. Little like town yeah, simulator, yeah. Yeah, that'd be animal farm crossing. simulator games. They should definitely have this, which injects more RPG elements into that kind of a genre. Okay. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics number one. 
Yep, why not? The Advance and A2 games were on the same level as the original, but even those were pretty fun. There was just something about FFT that captured my interest and still holds it to this day. Maybe it was the character customization, perhaps the music, the use of unique sprites for the cutscenes, uh, the pretty colors, or the political intrigue of the storyline. Maybe a perfect storm of all these factors, which is what I would say it is for sure. Uh, whatever the reason, this was such a great game and I would absolutely play more if it were available. I 100% agree. I think Final Fantasy Tactics would be an incredible, incredible new game. And somebody brought this up to me, and I probably would have put it on my list, to be honest with you. A new Chrono game. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Completely forgot, and I apologize wholeheartedly to you Chrono fans be. out there. Because, man, I'm a massive fan of that series. You should be apologized. You do, you're I'm doing a terrible me a person. I'm a <laughs> terrible person. Uh, it says, beyond that, just my own games left to talk about. Started playing Skyrim again. 160 hours in, and I still have so much left to do. Plus, I picked up Disgaea 4 for Christmas, so I've been sinking time into that as well. Then in about two weeks, it'll be time for Final Fantasy Explorers, which I imagine will be my focus for a while. And him and I have already exchanged friend codes, and we're going to play together. Okay. Uh, all those classes to try out and uh, explore with. Later in the year, World of Final Fantasy will be on my play- playlist as well. This game looks so damn adorable. Uh, it's marked- marketed as one that'll be easy for kids to pick up, so maybe I can even talk my kids into playing it. They're odd. They'd rather run around with me on a Call of Duty game murdering people. <laughs> 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 well, I, that's... I. I don't think that's just your kids. My cousins are the same way. Uh, he says, anyway, thanks for another great show. Alex, thank you for the email, man. Um, really appreciate it. You the man, Alex. And I'm stoked to play Explorers, for sure. Well, are you going to explore, though? From what I understand, it's like Monster Hunter, which I'm not a huge fan of Monster Hunter. But if it's Final Fantasy Monster Hunter with the class system, check it out. I might have a have a N plus with my new 3DS that I just got. My new new oh, 3DS. Oh, yeah, the new new. Oh, it's the new new. It's new new? It is new new. And you know what? Really quick, I would like to make a formal apology to Nintendo okay. about something. I complained a while back. You know, I mean, I've complained about Nintendo plenty of times. We all have. But there was one thing that I had an issue with a while back, and that was the transfer system from a 3DS to a new 3DS or, you know, 3DS XL, whatever. And I was like, I'm not going to buy a new one because I don't want to lose my Ambassador games. I don't want to do all this other stuff. And I looked online to see if there was a way to transfer all that over. And it was like really in-depth, detailed process where you had to use your PC and like a couple of different memory cards and, and hooking everything up and just lengthy and really, really stupid seemed to me. And I was like, this is so ridiculous. Well, I got it because I wanted to, you know, go ahead and play the the, the new games <coughs> on a bigger screen. Right. Literally the way they have it now, and I guess they they've they've changed this, or I don't I don't think it's been there since the beginning because I, I never saw this before. But literally, you just click a button on there and it does it wirelessly, transfers all your stuff from one to the other. That must be new. So it's yeah, phenomenal. Um, and it took I'd say uh, about an hour, hour and a half to get all done. Um, but once it was done, all my ambassador games are there. My Street Pass tags and games and everything are all moved over. Uh, my backgrounds that I have saved, everything is on there. It needed to be done. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so kudos to you, Nintendo, for 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 putting that in there. Because um, Lord knows, transferring from my Wii to my Wii U wasn't easy. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was awful. But uh, yeah, definitely. So I just really had to say that really quick. I'm really impressed, and I uh, like the new system. So um, if you would like to shoot us an email, <laughs> just as uh, Alex did there, you can do so at Frozen North Podcast at gmail.com. Our website is fngaming.net. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash the Frozen North. Our Twitter is at FN Podcast. Our blog is Frozen North Podcast.blogspot.com. We're on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Frozen North Games. Uh, I stream Wednesday and Thursday nights, usually from about 6 to 9 p.m. And uh, every now and then we'll we'll pop on there or host somebody else. Uh, but we, we'd, we'd appreciate you coming on there and, and following. Had, uh, had uh, what, like 11, 12 people on the other night? Yeah, pretty Something pretty like good crowd. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's always a good time, so come on over, just hang out, and uh, and talk games. Uh, and then we're on iTunes, where we'd appreciate you to uh, subscribe to and rate us on there. All right. News. News, guys. News. Hey, Mark. News. N- news. Okay. News. Uh, Sega teases Valkyria uh, Chronicles remaster on the PS4, uh, the turn-based third-person strategy RPG, has already been re-released on PC, 
helping a broader audience fully appreciate the engaging characters, fun tank combat, and intense large-scale battles. So that's pretty cool. Get your hands on a uh, pretty cool Jerpaja. Um, and then Bravely Second, speaking of jerp- Jerkabugajas from Square Enix, arrives in April, Collector's Edition and Demo announced. So it'll actually release on April 15th. The demo for this game is going to be a, the way they did it with the first Bravely Default. Um, so you'll be able to carry over some of your Street Pass tags and bonuses to the full game. So if you want to get your hands on it a little early and you know maybe do a little exploring, that'd be fun for you. A longtime Bioware writer, David Gator, leaves the company. Now, leaves. I, I say this weirdly, but fortunately, he wasn't part of the Mass Effect team. Um, but anytime they, you lose talent, it sucks. Uh, after 17 years, he uh, he's hanging up the boots. He was responsible for a lot of the characters in Dragon Age, uh, including Cassandra and Dorian, and also a KOTOR with HK-47. Mm. So some pretty uh, cool characters that he... Yeah. Uh, was in in responsible to do me? Yeah, yeah. And then oh, this is like Jerpaga Jerpaga news t- today. Special edition Fire Emblem Fates for the new new 3DS XL bundle was announced. Uh, the reason I put this story on here not because of the bundle, but because of what Nintendo's doing with the new uh, Fire Emblem game. So. The bundle does not come with any of the games. It just comes with like a cool Fire Emblem skin, like a black and white theme. Fates, the game, comes in two different versions with unique stories. So kind of think Pokemon-ish. Um, it retails for thirty nine ninety nine. So one of the stories, thirty nine ninety nine. After you reach a certain point, I assume in the game, you'll have the option to purchase the other side of the story for nineteen ninety nine. It's and essentially two multi- two viewpoints. Correct. So it's kind of like Trinity Sight System from right. Speaking in Three. Duality Sight System. No, well, no, well. I mean, it's it's yeah. They're going to come up with it. later on, Mark. Nintendo will release a third branch Ooh. of the narrative that sees uh, that sees the hero choosing neither conquest or birthright paths of the other two. And that DLC will also be priced for nineteen ninety nine. Also, for people who don't want to piecemeal it, Nintendo is coming out with a bundle of all three for seventy nine ninety nine. And then they're also planning on doing a DLC map based DLC. Uh, a season pass will be sold for seventeen ninety nine, with content available at a la carte pricing as it's released. So, eh, it's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean. Nintendo seems to be embracing the, I guess, the new model of, I mean, I've seen Nintendo making a lot of, like, large sweeping decisions to start coming yeah. into the modern gaming age. Um, yeah. Rather than, you know, being stubborn, they're starting to, and that, that might be good for well, them. Well, being know? stubborn isn't working. No, right. And this might be good for them. Um, I know that I haven't specifically played Fire Emblem on the 3DS. I've heard nothing but great things about it. So it's definitely on my list to play. So this is something that's Fantastic. exciting. And then uh, we have one more little bit of Nintendo news that JJ uh, actually brought to my attention about the their new platform, the NX. So yeah. it's uh, as far as I can tell, it's not like a hundred percent confirmed quite yet, but it's a pretty strong rumor. Sure. Um, that uh, the uh, it's about the NX. Uh, apparently, like there were rumors a while ago that like, hey, you're going to be able to take this thing on the go and play it as your home console. Both. Right. The rumor that's kind of going around right now um, is basically that the you're going to have two versions of the console. You're going to have a portable version that's coming out this this year, 2016, and then you're going to have the actual main console that comes out in 2017. So they haven't like hinted at, uh, at like how they're going to work together or if this is even the case. This is totally just like just I, I saw it on multiple sites that that. They were saying this and stuff, so I mean, we have to wait and see. But I think that sounds kind of interesting. Yeah, I like I, I I like the idea of them doing. I, I mean, obviously, it's Nintendo; they're always going to try something new. Yeah. But I really, I think this is kind of a, a cool new little way to innovate because the th- the 3ds, DS, whatever has been like. Yes, they've had new iterations of the system, but it's been pretty much the same system. Right. 
you know, for a long time. And I think this is kind of the next step. And they're doing a next step for both at the same time. And if they work together, I think that's cool. I'm curious about this handheld. The, the, hearing this rumor kind of gives you an idea of how maybe Nintendo's thinking. It's got to be a streaming, kind of like the Vita and the PS4. That's that's kind of what I'm thinking. Because yeah. they can't obviously put the power of the NX into the small handheld. So there, there's got to be a way to... If you can play the game on the NX and play the game on your handheld, it's got to be a streaming service, which is cool because that's that's the future. And that's I would I would not be surprised if it's like the Wii U with the tablet, but that tablet can also be used as a portable gaming device. Gotcha. And when you take it over to somebody else's house who has the NX home console, you can pull it up. You've got two controllers right there, each with their own screen in the middle. I'm more here about the NX, more excited I'm getting. Um, it's. It's interesting. It's uh, um, hopefully we'll hear some. Uh, I know that E three is rumored to maybe come out near that time to get some more details on the NX. Maybe some pricing. Yep. That'd be pretty fun. We'll have to wait and see. Wait and see. That's your news. That's your news for this week. Uh, this is a year. We're technically always in a year. Yeah, that is that is one hundred percent true. All right. So, as we mentioned at the beginning of the episode, we are going to be doing some restructuring on the show. Yeah. Mark, what does that mean? That means that we are uh, restructuring the show. The <laughs> format of what you hear is going to be different than what you've heard before. <laughs> we are all changing our voices and getting well cool accents. Mark, well stated, what's your sir. accent? Uh, Midwestern. I, I would do Russian because it's easy for me, but I think I'm going to do like the, um, Ryan, the Ryan accent. <laughs> Talk like that. So, basically what it comes down to is we're going to try and be more like, obviously it's an audio podcast, we're always going to be listener focused, but we're going to try and be more listener focused in that we want people who listen and, and, and stuff to contribute a lot more than, than we have gotten in the past. We we tried a long time ago to, obviously we're all new at this, we tried a long time ago to say like, hey, we need people to come help us build our website and we want people to contribute and do blah, blah, blah. We didn't have any sort of listener base at all. We shouldn't have done that from the start. I, you know, I'm, I'm glad we did because we we learned quickly that you know you can't do that without having enough people yep. you know want to do this thing. Right. But I think we're at the point now where we have enough people interested in wanting to help out um, to where we can we can do something a little bit better like this, and it's not going to be like looking for writers and looking for people to help promote stuff. It's literally going to be who wants to be on the show. Give us your thoughts, and that's it. Yeah. So, basically, it's gonna it's gonna work like this. Each show is gonna be just as as it normally is. We're gonna come on. We're gonna talk about what we've been playing. Go over emails and stuff, and I'll plug everything. Brian is gonna be he's still gonna be on the show. He's just gonna take a little bit of a back seat mm-hmm. um, as far as like headlining everything. He's gonna be our news guy, and he's gonna be here for top fives. Uh, but as far as you know, when it comes to talking about side quests and stuff like that, it's gonna be pretty much Mark and I. Um, in in that regard, uh, so for instance, our next episode is going to be. I haven't decided on the on the second part yet. I think we're going to have a side quest, but we'll we'll see. It's going to be like, what have you been playing? Then emails, shout outs, all that stuff. Brian will come on talk about the news. Then it'll be what we uh, hearing from our contributors. Now, what that means is we've got a Facebook group set up with. I think we have like sixteen people in there right now. Yeah. And all have expressed interest in one way or another um, to, to help us out and, and wanting to, to share their thoughts online. And anybody can do this. Absolutely anybody. If you have a Facebook account and you're willing to share, share your thoughts with us, reach out to me. Let me know. Uh, Facebook.com slash The Frozen North. Just get in contact with me on there or just send the, the Facebook page a, a message, whatever. And let me know that you're interested. I'll get you an invite and you're more than welcome to join us. What it is is every week I'm going to ask a new question. I'm going to say, and we tried doing this a while ago with the bi-weekly questions, um, and it, you know, it was okay, uh, not not anything crazy. We we had uh, some responses, but not it didn't kind of go over as well as I'd hoped. But what's going to happen this time is we're going to have I'm going to do like a montage of every single person that submits a response. So for the first one that we're doing next week, uh, well, two weeks from now, it's going I'm going to ask. What's your favorite game? We want people to get to know our contributors, so we figure the easiest way is to let them know what kind of games they play. Just tell us your favorite game, a little bit about it. Literally, we're talking like two minutes max, and then I will just put your recording in there. You submit it to me. I'll put it in there. Then I'll put the next person's and the next person's and the next person's, and we'll just listen to a montage of listeners, um, contributors who are, who are talking about their favorite games, 
and then it'll come back to Mark and I in the studio, and we'll talk a little bit about what we just heard. That way we get you know some new voices and, and, and some fresh ideas and stuff in there. And in this group that we have on there um, called FN Contributors, uh, it's <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, it's I, I want people to like collaborate. I want them to say like, hey, let's work on this together. Let's do that. Like, because it's all a pl- also a place for side quests that we're going to do. Now, if you haven't listened to the show before, side quests are what we call like segments that contributors put together um, themselves. They basically will like talk about a game or an idea of games or some kind of theory that they have. Anything, a top five list, whatever you guys want to do, put it together like five to eight minutes, something like that. And then just shoot it over to us. And then we will actually put that in the show. That'll be at the end. So right now we do top fives every episode. I'm probably going to cut that back to once a month. So every other episode. And then we'll do side quests on the off ones. Where we have somebody come in and and submit their thing. And then again, Mark and I will talk about that. And and their thoughts on that. So it's going to be a lot more interaction between us and these uh, these, these new contributors that are going to be there. So, like I said, we've got like you know, sixteen people already that are that are interested in this stuff. It's going to be really, really cool. I mean, within the first like couple of days, we had people saying like, "Hey, I want to do one on this. Hey, I want to do yeah. one on this and stuff." We've it's actually really got cool. some already. Yeah, yeah, we've gotten a couple of submissions. Um, also, I want to mention. I, I realize that some people are you know, <laughs> camera shy is not mic shy. I guess is the best way to say it. You don't want to talk on on the show. That's totally fine. I had somebody ask me, "Hey, if I want to send in a side quest, but I don't want to record myself." Is there any way I can just send you an email and you just read that on the air and that be my side quest? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. By all means, do it. I would love to. I have no problems reading that stuff on the air. I mean, we pretty much do that as it is now, but by mm-hmm. all means, send that in. And if you want an invite to the Facebook group, that, that's that's freaking contributing. If you have done something for the show in some way, I'll get you an invite. Absolutely. I want this community to grow. So, you know, any anything that you want to do, any ideas you have, send me an email. Frozennorthpodcast at gmail.com. Just, just Get me your ideas. I want to hear from everybody, and I want this thing to grow. I want people to to be able to submit. You know, I want to I want to have episodes where I've got. Okay, guys, we're going to talk about what makes a good villain in a video game, and then boom, we go to a montage where seven people have sent in submissions, uh, each of them talking about what they think makes a good video game, and then Mark and I, you know, complement that with our own thoughts. And I think I think that would be really cool. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the the new rundown <laughs> and how things are going to go. On top of that. We also have a new idea, and it, those of you that follow me on Twitter have already seen me ask about it. We're doing, we're, we want to do some sort of a video game book club type thing. Like a book club is, I mean, I would assume most people know what a book club is, where I've never been a part of one, but I know what it is, where you, you know, read a book or read part of a book, and then you get together with the rest of the group, and you all talk about what, what you just read. Um, and then the next sec- next uh, next time you get together, you talk about the rest of the book or a new book or whatever. I want to do something like that. The problem is I'm trying to figure out how to format it. I don't know whether I want to do it like once a month or once an episode or have it be a segment on the show or have it be its own separate show because there's pros and cons to, to either way of, of how we're going to do it. Old pro-con. Right, Old pro-con. Right. So I'm looking for suggestions on how to do something like that as well. Um, and again, like I said, I brought this up on Twitter and I had some people tweet me some great ideas. I had some people message me some great ideas, have a handful of people interested. We've wanted to do this from the, from the beginning, but unfortunately again, we just didn't have the numbers for it. And I think now again, we've got a handful of people interested uh, in doing it. And and that's another thing I want. This is another way I want to get other people involved. Um, and I, I think, I don't know if I'll just use the contributor page or if I'll make another group or something like that, but we'll have another page somewhere when we decide it, uh, where we will all be able to talk about that continuously as well. And not just on the segment or the show that we decided to do it on. But yeah, if you've got any suggestions on that, please, please send them in. Let me know what, what you think would work, uh, for something like that. Should we play an entire game like once per month or should we do like play it in sections and be like, all right, we're all going to play up to this point in the game. And then next episode we'll talk about it. And then after that, we'll play up to this section and then we'll talk about it. And then after that, we'll finish the game and then we'll talk about it. I don't know. I, I truthfully don't know. We know which game we want to do. I'm not going to say it yet. And it's, you know, we, we've got plenty of time, but I think if it works, it'll be cool. It will. So this whole thing, both the restructure of the video game book club idea and everything is all dependent on the listeners. If it doesn't work, I'm going to be really sad. 
I'll tell you that right now. And Mark hates it when I cry. I do. So I just I have wanna, to hold his hand. You know. And, yeah. Dab and, the tears out of his eyes. And you guys remember. You know, you know what? For a second, I want Mark to rile everybody up again, like he did last time, to get him in. You want me to rile stuff. them up? Yeah, do I it. I will rile do them it. up. Do it. Look, this is all about us getting to know you and you getting to know us and creating a larger new family. And look at it this way: uh, you're going to introduce yourselves to our entire list. <laughs> I'm like really riled up, but I'm also like my no. I completely all- understand. But yeah. <laughs> Let me try. It's like when you get excited and you're just like, I just, I yeah. can't put it into words. Uh, yeah, th- this is your chance to you know get your voice out there, get heard by everyone, and build up this community we call gaming. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And if you're from Kansas City area and you don't contribute, you're dead to me. Totally untrue statement. And you'll help us save the world. That's okay. Yes, save the world. Play video games. Yeah, you, no, no. He's <laughs> absolutely right. You're helping us to save the world. Absolutely. By sending in these segments. Your powers you're, combined. You're, you're making people, you're breaking down walls and making people understand that we're all in this world together. <laughs> we're all cooperating. It's a, it's a great time to be alive. Expounding yep. on totally untrue statement. And in turn, that will save the universe. So, Yep. So get in there. <laughs> Send us a segment. Give us your ideas. Save the universe. Get in, get in on the group on the uh, Facebook page, and uh, you know who knows? Maybe you'll make some new friends out of that. You guys will end up collabing together later on, and uh, we'll get some side quests from multiple people at the same time. Oh and, yeah! I mean, it could be really cool. Boom! It'd be pretty awesome. You bet. All right. Now, since again, this is an episode where we're kind of quote hitting the reset button. We thought it'd be a good idea to for you know new listeners and people who haven't heard us before to kind of reiterate uh, our favorite games of all time one of the things oh, that we yeah. do as i mentioned is top five lists on this show and uh we're gonna we're just gonna hit our top five games of all time each of us we have our own separate lists although i was a little unprepared for how much they have changed <laughs> oh yeah i i realize that uh i'm not much of a i realize i have very very little nostalgia in my blood because i've got one uh, and i've got I think two games that were on my uh, list last time that have been bumped off recently. So, yeah. You can actually, after after listening to this, go to our website, fngaming.net, and you can see our old top five list still up there. I won't change them for a while. Uh, I will eventually. But uh, you can kind of see how different they've become. Yep. Um, I want to talk about yeah. it. Well, fine, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. Top five games of all time. I'll start us off. Actually, honorable mentions. Uh, I want to. I know that I took these two off my list last time, uh, and and they've been replaced. And I'm really surprised because, God, I love these games so much. The Secret of Mana, one of my favorite games of all time, hands down. I absolutely love it. Zelda with experience points and leveling up. I mean, yeah. it's awesome. Legit. And Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. Off my list. I almost put that on my list. Still I didn't think top, that would ever happen. Still in your top ten, though. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Both of those would be in my top ten, right. absolutely. But, uh, yeah, bump for my top five. I was, uh, I, yeah, I was a little shocked. And what's funny is, because anybody who's listened to the show for a long time knows that I'm such a huge JRPG freak. So, I got I got some, some company yeah, it's on my weird. list. It's impressive. Some some Rupagas made it on his Derpaga list. <laughs> Uh, do you guys have any honorable mentions? Yes, I've got three. Go uh, the Uncharted series, um, Final Fantasy VII, and um, Bioshock Infinite would be on my honorable mentions. Yeah, um, Final Fantasy VII, Bioshock Infinite for sure. Mm-hmm. And also Deus Ex and uh, Human Revolution as well. Mm-hmm. I really... Is that what it's called? Deus Ex and Human Revolution? Deus Ex and Deus Ex <laughs> Human Revolution. You want me to say it twice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I, just it was I love it. I can't call you out on anything on your list, so I had to nitpick. Yeah. You, you had really a good list. It's tradition to call you out on something. That's true. You know, I got to do it. Yep. Sorry. All right. Let's get on with it then. Number five. My number five. <laughs> I, uh, what can I say? You haven't even beaten it yet, too. Nope. It is on, later on on somebody else's list, but The Witcher 3. I, I mean, we'll talk about it then, but uh, yeah, my number five is The Witcher 3. Mark, number five. My number five is Dishonored. 
This was a very tough choice because it was between that and uh, Deus, uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution. <laughs> Why did you say he it had like the that? Eye of the tiger. Deus <laughs> he really wants me to say that first part of the title. <laughs> um, these are both uh, very exploration and freedom oriented games where you can approach situations through pure combat. Or you can do stealth, or you can do a lot of like interaction to get through different situations. But I had to go with Dishonored because it's just a much better designed game from a gameplay perspective. And it's an original setting that's very fascinating and yeah. really fun. But there you have it. All right. Absolutely. Brian, number five. My number five, uh, a game I haven't even finished yet, uh, but Xenoblade Chronicles X. I don't know if it'll climb in my uh, top five games of all time list, but as for right now, it's resonated with me so much that I have, pl- I have pumped in a good 90 hours, and I don't even see the end yet, because I've got a lot of stuff to do uh, before I finish the finish the game, and after the post-game. You just got Flight, too. Just got Flight, just beat Chapter 9, uh, but I've so many, I've got, probably got like 15 or 16 of the green quests, the side quests. Oh, you're about to do 10. Oh yeah! Oh, have, but I, well, you're but you're gonna get a little fifty scale. You'll I'm gonna fine. have two. You'll I'm probably gonna have two fifty scales by then. Yeah, you'll so, be fine because I'm getting the most expensive one uh, first. I'm getting the uh, Ad, Ad Musius. Woo. Yep. So, yep. Uh, what a fun game! Um, like I said, it's definitely not a universally loved game, but for me, it hits in all the right spots. Uh, only falls in a few. So number five, and it's on the Wii U. Yeah, where did it come from? You know, I just I love big mechs too. I'm a sucker for those big old mechs, man. And that game does it beautifully. Yeah, it's fantastic. You bet. All right, Mark, we have the same number four. We do, but again, that shows up later on somebody else's list. I wonder whose list that is. Mark and I's number four is the Mass Effect trilogy. Look at JJ with two Western RPGs in a row. <sighs> Whoa! And I'll get into those. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I got some stuff to say about it. All right. Uh, Brian, number four. Uh, my number four is Half Life Two, which it's not on Mark's list. It's so not. I it am used to be. extremely upset with Mark, but not really because he's so ginkgo biloba. He would have had that as an honorable mention. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, you should tell tell us why you like it so much. So when I put games on my top five list, my criteria is what game like that I just feel like utter and like giddiness to play you know like just absolute like like whoa this is what games can do half-life 2 when you step out on the city uh city 17 and you see the citadel uh in the in the air and you get the goosebumps and that little uh drone comes by and takes your picture you really get a sense of just absolute like what did i just get into like is this real life yeah with no dialogue it completely yeah. sets uh just, yeah. <laughs> But that's what I that's what I my criteria for games on my top five of all time list of games that just resonate with me to a deeper extent than just that was a fun game of like, oh my goodness, what did I what am I playing right now? This is yeah. something special. The way it builds atmosphere is yeah, incredible. Absolutely. The reason it's not on my list is because we had that news about uh the head writer quitting Valve, and then I realized I don't care. It's been so long. Yeah, and I've kind of dragged through it. it so much. That I've just stopped caring or having any hope for more games, and which doesn't mean that if they did announce it, oh, if it would get excited, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. cool. Yeah. All right, well, Half Life Two is my number four for sure. Number three, my number three replaced Final Fantasy Seven. Final Fantasy Nine. I recently replayed through this again, and uh, I just realized how much I absolutely love it. This game embodies the Final Fantasy series. For anybody who is curious about the series that's never played it, this game is the one that shows you exactly what Sakaguchi intended for the series. Like, it encapsulates the heart and soul of what Final Fantasy is. And, I mean, that's straight from his mouth. He has said that. That, like, this is, you know, my swan song. This is the one in the series that this is kind of, you know, how I envisioned it to be. And I I just freaking absolutely adore this game. Uh, I know Mark really likes it, too. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's definitely up there. Uh, so that's my number three, Final Fantasy Nine. Very cool. Mark, number three. My number three, I'm shocked nobody else has on their lists. It is The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. And I think at this point it's almost just a pure nostalgia pick because there are other games that are probably better than it. But that experience of just putting that's that a cartridge fantastic in. fantastic game. I mean, it is. It is, definitely. But I, there's so many good games now. 
Um, yeah. But that, that feeling of just putting the cartridge in for the first time, firing up the game, and seeing all the new things they had added to the Zelda world. Oh, yeah. All the new gameplay elements, the way the world was built, the fact that there's a dark world as well. I love the dark world. There's, I can't think of a flaw in the game, and that's pretty rare in gaming. Yeah, it's amazing. So, I mean, if you haven't played it, what's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, seriously, if you haven't played it, Mark is not your friend. Yeah. All right. Brian, number three. Uh, my number three is The Last of Us by Naughty Dog. Again, um, another game that when you're playing it, you are so engrossed into the world and you're so... Oh, what's, I can't even describe the word I'm trying to, trying to think about. Like You just realize you're playing something special. That there's something that's going on here. You know, It's moving you. Um, the acting, uh, the voice acting, the animations, the world building, the, the opening scene to the last line in the game are just the gold standard for why I play video games. You know, the it's like watching a movie, um, you know, an Oscar winning movie. Like if this was put into a movie, you, you, you just know it would be getting awards. So The Last of Us. Um, also had really good gameplay, Mark. Just because you can't play it well doesn't mean it's got bad gameplay. Oh, whoa! Wow. We've been over this. I just don't like the save scheme. You... I just want to be able to save every time I make even the slightest accomplishment so that I can reload <laughs> if I do something I didn't like. <laughs> gotcha. Understand. All right. Um, What are we on? Number two. Number two. Number two, my number two has not changed. My number two and a one actually haven't changed. My number two is Xenogears. I freaking adore this game. If you want to hear me gush about it, listen to like every other episode that we've ever done. Uh, because no matter how much other people give me crap, I still love this game and I always will. It is one of the most complex storylines with... It's really long, too, for a PS1 game. And uh, it's got mechs and it's got fantastic characters and it's got a thousand freaking storylines to it and it's got a terrible second disc mark wouldn't know the glory of well tall no he would not no nope. he would not unbelievable or heimdall or, or brigandier or brigandier come on Viers. yeah unbelievable mark you need to play it you really do uh brian actually recently list. finished it as well mm-hmm. but it is fantastic and also our number one recommendation for Mark. <laughs> um, <laughs> my number two is Xenogears. Mark, number two. My number two, I'm shocked once again that it's not on JJ's list. My I number like two, three better anyways. Uh, uh, that's true. Good point. Fair enough. <laughs> three three <laughs> better on my list either. You win. Uh, Sweet Coden 2. Basically, if you wanted to take Shakespeare and Machiavelli and put them in a blender... And blend them, and then bake the residue that came out of that blender. Oh my god! <laughs> into a game, you would have Suikoden. It's it's equal parts just heart wrenching personal drama, uh, family drama, and amazing politics wrapped up in a philosophical core. You could maybe call it the uh, Game of Thrones of video games. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I would. I mean, it's it's just incredible, and you can't understand how incredible it is unless you actually buy the game on PSN and play it, because it's all about the sophistication and the politics and the story. But uh, it's one of my favorite games because of the way it activates my mind every time I play it. Absolutely, you just got to get past that. Uh, what is it? The window city. Oh yeah, you got to get past. What's it called? Something South Window. South Window. Is it South yeah. Window? Is it? There is a south window. Yeah. There was one. I, maybe it's the school. There's a part that you said you always get to, and then you stop playing. Oh, no. It's before that. It's <laughs> the title screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Oh. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. Said, yeah. Whoa. You said no, that, yeah. he said yeah. No, you that was said not, That was yeah. Brian. Uh, it's okay. It's all right. I forgive you. Whatever. I've beaten it enough times. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Brian, number two, sir. My number two, and if you've listened to our first episode has been dethroned. Mass Effect Trilogy is now number two on my all-time hey. list. What game? But you know what? That wasn't on our lists. It's very it true. It wasn't before. It is now. Um, the glory of the Mass Effect Trilogy, uh, obviously, I've shared with JJ and Mark. You've infected us with it. Yes. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's still, I mean, I, 
I always I told the guys that for it to be dethroned, a game, a truly good game would have to come along. One ended up doing it, but I would honestly put my one and two as one A and one B. Uh, they're both like That's up cheating. there on the same plane. Uh, I can't. They, they both they're very similar games too. If you think about the, the way they're structured, the the difference is one being sci fi, one being older. But yeah, Mass Effect trilogy. I, I mean, I've gushed about it so much. I, I'll just take it to you guys. Is I, the end of The Witcher three going to make me pick a color? No, <laughs> no. The end of the, the end of The Witcher three is going to make you depressed as sh- and you're going to want to play it again. Jeez. Oh, I mean, we've talked about this before, but this is one of. I'd say there's maybe five to ten games total that have ever had this happen Mm -hmm. where you get completely in the zone and completely engrossed in the game to the point where you could play for six hours and not even realize the time had passed. Yeah, you're like, oh man, it's it's ten o'clock, or I haven't eaten yet, and you're like, how long have I been playing? Like, oh god, oh it's my day off. Oh my god, it's time for bed. (laughs) I I can honestly say, like, this is gonna make me sound cheesy as hell, but I I can honestly say the Mass Effect trilogy changed my life, like. Not because, like, I aspired to be a better person like Shepard and, you know, go out there and save the universe. Mm-hmm. But because, especially if you go back and look at my old top five list, all I freaking played was JRPGs. I had no interest in branching out. You know, I played Counter-Strike religiously back then. Um, but that was as far as, you know, maybe like Halo with a couple of friends or something like that. But the, when I first saw Mass Effect Trilogy, I was like, oh, it's another bro shooter suite. I don't really care. Don't yeah. want to even give it a shot. Not up my wheelhouse. Don't want to do it. Right. Played the first one. First time I did it, I, I got to the Citadel, and I was like, oh, my gosh, is there anything else to do in this game other than walk around and talk to people in this giant building? I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> so I stopped. Then we started the show, and Brian couldn't stop talking about it. So much so that there's an earlier episode where I made fun of it by yes. editing his voice with my own and uh, making him do a non-existent <laughs> top five, which is awesome, and I'm still proud of that to this day. Yeah, it's one uh, of our good ones. <laughs> but... After, you know, talking to him and, and having him feel so strongly about it and, and push for it, I was like, you know what, it'd be a good one for us to play together and, and, and um, review for the show. So I forced myself through it, got through the first one, and you know what, I liked it more than I thought I would. And I was like, you know, once you get out of the Citadel, it's okay, it's all right. And then eventually I was like, well, we got to play two and three, we got to finish it out, you know, totally, because he raved about that as well. And I mean, once I played two, I was hooked. Yeah. I could not tell you how like much I sat back and I was like, I have been like, how much have I missed out on, you know, since then I've played games like uncharted. I never would have played the last of us. I got, I got to play that. Um, the Witcher three is obviously on my list. I played yeah. through one and two of that. Um, I mean, I have played all these games that I never would have played. Otherwise, uh, the fallout series, I, I played three a while ago. I probably never would have kept going. Um, not cause I didn't dislike three. I thought it was amazing, but because it wasn't, you know, my thing. Sure. But now that I've got, gotten this new appreciation for, for for Western RPGs, man, I mean, I'm gushing right now sure. about a game that I never thought I would have gushed about. So, yeah. I, yeah, it absolutely has earned that spot on my list at number four. Um, and it's Brian's number two and Mark's mm-hmm. number four as well. Mark, anything to say other than... Yeah, uh, you know, this is one of the games that I... Game series that I knew about and it existed out there in my mind, but it was like such a matzo ball yeah. that I was like... Ah. I don't know. Everyone loves it, but it's there's three games that are so long. Right. I never bothered bothered to play it, and that's where Witcher was as well at the time. Right. You were. Just... Um, and then I played Mass Effect, and yeah. it was incredible, and it was really, really like changed how I look at games. And then I played The Witcher, and the first one was terrible. It was. <laughs> But the second one was really good, and yeah. the third one's turning out to be really good. Yeah. And you know what? There's another game series that I've also viewed as this big matzo ball that I'm just not ready to deal with, and that's the uh, the Uncharted series. Yes. And I think it's time. Uh, I, you, th- those Announcement are... on the show. It's time for me to play through all of Uncharted. Do you have, do you have no, the, like a journey? Do you have the collection? Yes. <laughs> hey, my journey's still going, y'all. I have it for <laughs> PS3. Get the. Uh, can I make a recommendation? Yeah, PS4 version, so I can get that 60 frames per I second. I will let you borrow mine. Ooh. Do it. Uh, yeah. And here's why. Deal. The 60 frames per second makes the gameplay so much crisper than the first. The first three. Uh, don't get me wrong; they're fantastic games. But I will let you borrow my collection just to play through one through one through three to get yep. an idea because they're, they're they're way better. All the on complaints PS4. that you had about one when I played through it the first time because I never played it on PS3. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when I played it on the the Nathan Drake collection, I'm sitting here like, "What is Mark talking about? It's great, <laughs> exactly. It's fantastic." So when you're ready, but to play, obviously it's a different version. When you're ready so. to play it, hit me up. I'll let you borrow my collection and All you right. can play through it. 
Uh, but you honestly, that's not going to be as bad of a journey. They're like eight hour games each. Yeah, so it's quick and easy. So. I'm ready for that next one. But it's feel good. I'm glad. We, I think on the show, I think that's my favorite thing is we've all played branched out, and I have a couple JRPGs, or I have a JRPG on my top five of all time because I, you know, I we all <laughs> kind of mel- mesh with each other, and we, you know, I haven't played a City Skylines game yet, but yeah. uh, I'm sure that's coming. The, I've definitely always <laughs> yeah, had that'll, a list. that'll hit your top five. I've always had a list of like I know I should play this, but I don't want to. I think we all do. And yeah, I've absolutely. knocked a few games off that list, and I feel really good about it. Absolutely, definitely agreed. Number ones, Mark. Our number one is not budged. Nope. It is still, on, still the, the, same on the throne. That's true. Because it's the greatest game ever. It is. It is the greatest game ever. What is our favorite game of all time? It is City Skylines. <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> getting resistant. Quite possibly the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's Final Fantasy VI. Final Fantasy VI. What is there left to say about this game that we haven't said a thousand times over? I don't know, man. I mean, it's like the ultimate fairy tale in RPG form. Yeah. I, I like, I have told, actually, I was telling somebody about this, um, I think at work, who who uh, I found out plays video games, and we were, we were kind of talking about it and stuff, and, and she had never played, and she was like, oh, well, my boyfriend plays, uh, has played all the other Final Fantasies and stuff, and I was like, well, has he played six? She's like, yeah. I've just, you know, never really found the time to get into it. And I was telling her about six. It was like my favorite game. And all of, this, of course, I start gushing about it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to lay this down. And I told her the story of Edgar and Sabin and, you know, what, what they go through and everything like that um, with the coin flip and everything. And she's like, oh, that's really cool. And I was like, yeah, that's just two characters out of 14. And they all have their own backstories and their yeah. own individual adventures and their own destinies that they're trying to seek. And this was a Super Nintendo game. I mean, this it, it's just so far ahead of its time and the music is stellar it's just a freaking unbelievable experience and i think part of what makes it such a special game in like a bittersweet kind of way is that it's probably never going to be outdone nothing is ever going to take that torch and carry it people don't make games like final fantasy 6 anymore yeah um i mean well i mean that's personal tastes Obviously, no, I mean, but, uh, obviously, the, uh, people will succeed in other types of games, sure. or whatever. But nobody's going to have that perfect, like, storybook esque plot that's yeah. simple yet complex at the same time with a really amazing world. Yeah. I don't know. It's just an instant. The development classic. team is like all stars. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the tra- the it's amazing. Yes, it, it's, <laughs> it's like you can't remake the magic of '80s movies. You can't remake this magic either. Right. Yeah. No. Absolutely. I agree. So that's our favorite game, Mark and I's number one, Final Fantasy VI, all time. Boom. Brian. Well, I got a new number one, everybody. Uh, the Witcher 3, which is also JJ's number five. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, I believe, back when I was gushing about Mass Effect, that it would take something world beater to, to dethrone a Mass Effect trilogy. And I got one last year. Just real quick, quick story about why it's my favorite game of all time. I've already called it my game of the decade. Um, there's no games come out from 2010 to now that is even close to as good as The Witcher 3 is, in my opinion. Um, and I would, like I said, it's going to be very tough for a game, you know, in the next five years to to surpass that. Um, if it does, then that's just good good news for gamers. There, I bought it day one, was going to play it day one, started playing. I got about 27 hours in, roughly, and uh, the XP bug hit me on PC. Um, if you guys know about it, there was an XP bug that wasn't giving you any XP for doing quests. I had to restart because I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm under-leveled now, and I want to get the full experience, and I was excited to restart. Like, you know, you get 27 hours in a game, and you have to start over. Some people aren't happy. I was like, woo, okay, I'm going to try it this way now, right? Played it through to the end. The ending was so good that the only way I could keep myself from just starting a new game and replaying was to delete it off my computer. I, I oh, put geez. like 140 hours in, and I was sitting there at the credit screen, and I was remember I was just sitting there like looking down like, I'm going to restart. I know I'm going to restart. And I have a backlog that's like 150 games. So I was like, I can't restart. I have to play other games. But I wanted to replay that game so badly. New game had new game plus had come out at that time. 
I was like, I'll just do New Game Plus, whatever, you know, I, it'll go much quicker. And I was like, no, Brian, no. So I deleted it off my computer, or the, at least the files of the game. I kept my save file, obviously, but I deleted the, the game off of my computer so I would physically not be able to start it back up. That's how good The Witcher 3 was. I wanted to immediately start playing again. And that is, and I put 140 plus hours into that game, uh, and I was not done. So that's why The Witcher Three is my number one of all time. Now it uh, it sits upon a throne, guys. It sits upon a throne. Solid. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it, again, as Brian said, it's my number five. And I mean, between this one and the Mass Effect trilogy, I I remember trying to figure out what I was going to do for my last two, and I'm looking through my collection, going crazy. And I'm look, literally looking at each game one by one, trying to figure out what I wanted to put on my list, and it just kept coming back to those two. And what's funny about The Witcher 3 is that I didn't like The Witcher 1 that much. Right. And Witcher 2, I thought, was a very well-made game, but I didn't have a lot of fun with it. Oh. Uh-huh. And, I mean, if you go back and listen to our reviews of both games, that's exactly what I said. Like, you know, this is a very well-put-together game. The first one is, you can tell they have amazing ideas, and they really want to do something and take this someplace, and there's a really good potential there. Second game improved upon all that and gave you solid gameplay and and really good story, but it wasn't like oh man this is you know such a fantastic experience and right. having a blast with it right. And to be honest, I wasn't that excited to play Witcher Three. The only reason I wanted to was because I had played one and two, and because you know everybody had been raging about Witcher th- or uh, raving I guess the best way to say it, about Witcher Three, and uh, I was like all right fine I'll give it a shot and I did and. Every time I turned it on, I start playing, and I mean, you, you guys we, saw me we, playing we were watching. when I walked in. I had planned on being like, all right, when they get here, I'll turn it off and we'll do it. Nope, I played for like 40 <laughs> minutes. It was fun. Uh, while you guys were like, so are we going to start soon? Or oh, man, I'm anything? so hungry now. <laughs> um, but I, man, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. It's such a fantastically put together. It's the best game I have ever played, right. hands down. It's just, I mean, it's my number five. I like these other games better because of what they mean to me. Sure. But as far as the best game, it is the best game. And I'm curious to see if this climbs your list after, because you're not, honestly, I, I know where you are in the game. You've got a long way to go. You do. You do. <laughs> it's not going to feel like it because the story starts to really, really get interesting. But I'm curious to see if it actually climbs on your list based on the actual body of work of the story. I've done so much as it is. Too. Oh, yeah. You've still got a ways to go. Uh, but uh, but the cool thing is, is it's done by a smaller, a relatively smaller team that did this game. Like, hello, you cannot tell me that you have to have giant studios to make to make AAA titles. Uh, I will go ahead and sh- point you over to CD Projekt Red, who you can literally watch them grow from Witcher 1. They were they were raw, and it, it shows. Witcher 2, they yeah. were like, okay, we've done a game before. We're more comf- confident. And then with Witcher 3, they just went ahead and hit a grand slam. Yeah. Like, it's amazing. It's insane. It, it's, it's fantastic. Yep. So there you have it. That's our top five games of all time. Um, hopefully that gives you a little insight into the kind of games that the three of us are into. By all means, send us, uh, send us an email. Let us know what your top five games are of all time. We'd love to hear it. Uh, Frozen North Podcast at gmail.com. Real quick, we got one last thing we want to go over, and that is the contributor question. As I said, one of the new things that we want to do is that montage where we have you know several responses sent in, and we just put them all together, play them, and then Mark and I will talk about them. So like this, it's going to be kind of a get-to-know-you type thing. We're just asking, what's your favorite game of all time? That's it. One to two minutes, talk about it on the mic. Uh, doesn't need to be like sound amazing or anything like that. You don't have to do any editing. I'll take care of all that on my end if you want me to. Uh, really just totally, totally the ball is in your court. You just send it to me and I will work with what you give me. Um, frozen North podcast at gmail.com. If you do that again, you will get invited to, well, if you want, you'll get invited to our Facebook group where we are going to be talking about all this stuff and, and sharing ideas and, you know, just, just talking about gaming. So, and so far it's been really cool. And, uh, that's 80 episodes, guys. 80, Pretty awesome. Freaking yeah. 80 episodes. Hey, I crunched those numbers, too. Remember? Uh, we passed that 20,000 listens mark a while ago. We did. Yeah, in uh, like a quarter of the time that yeah. we hit 10,000. So it's pretty pretty impressive. Yep. Um, Thanks for all your listening, guys. Woo! Definitely. Yeah, for sure. We really, really, really appreciate it. All right. Anybody have anything else before we close it out today? No, no, I, I got nothing. 
I'm good to go. Well, I'm well, hungry. Mark makes I'm mouth hungry. Mark's into the Mark's making microphone. me hungry. Yeah. Talking about him hungry. Yeah, I'm gonna go get some lunch. <laughs> All right. With that, this is the Frozen North podcast signing off for episode number eighty. Again, we want to thank you for listening. My name is JJ. My name is Mark. And my name is Marion. And as always, thank you for listening and keep on gaming. Our theme song was made available through the Creative Commons Attribution License by Ziphoid. The song title is Radical Fanfare.